Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad you're here this morning, especially this morning. Glad you're here. Hopefully, uh, you're getting ready to, uh, you know, sort of batten down a little bit. It's not going to be real bad. It's going to be, you know, 20, 25 miles an hour. But y'all been there, done that, and uh, we know how to handle it. It's just like a little breeze compared to what we had last time. Our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning. Drew Pollard and the hardworking crew up there doing all the Bay County area and the surrounding counties. We're looking at a high today, 86, low 76, water temperature still around 85 at the end of the pier. The moon phase, our Monday moon phase, we always talk about the moon on Monday because it means so much to outdoors, but if you're really serious about doing some you know, the finer things as far as really, uh, just, you know what I'm talking about if you understand the moon. We're looking at, we're, we're waxing. We're going to be, a full moon is going to be Sunday the 22nd. So that's right, so it's going to be coming up. And uh, this full moon in August is, is really special. That is, weather's going to come through, sort of going to clear up a little bit. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be some special, uh, this coming weekend, they're going to make plans to do some stuff with the tides and all. Uh, speaking of tides, it brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. We're looking at a high tide this morning at 338. And today is August the 16th, folks. We're halfway through. And but those neat tides are over with. All week long, we have some strong tides. And low tide will be at 253 this afternoon. And I just uh, really like the tide, tidal flow this week. So hopefully you can get some uh, outdoor activities done. Like I said, wind's coming out north, northeast and pretty strong. So keep eye on things. But it's going to get on out of here. And it's going to be good after that. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, well, welcome back. Let's take a look at some pictures. We uh, always like to catch up with things. Last week, uh, uh, some of my buddies went on a, went on a uh, fishing trip, and they caught a really nice grouper. And of course, several of them posed with it. But I finally got the bottom of the story. Check out my text right here from Jarrell. Hey, Winston, I went on a trip with Joe Wright, Eldon Chris Knox, and of course, I caught the fish. Jarrell, here it is right here. And uh, Jarrell is the uh, He's one of the leaders out there as far as telling them how to fish and all, and he gives them a hard time. So, Darrell, good job, buddy. I got you on, and you're getting due credit. All right. I know you, I'm going to go with y'all next year. I, that way we'll have it on video. All right, Scott Fitzgerald on Panama City Fishing. We talked about how, you know, catching these, these mahi, they've just been really good, and I like how they wear the uh, matching shirts to go with the fish. That's going to be a, a style now. Whatever, how you ever go fishing, if you go red snapper fishing, you want to wear a red shirt. Group of fish and wear sort of a brownish shirt. All right. Wesley Tillman called this nice grouper, and Wesley's growing. He's goodness gracious. But uh, it's Carl Andrews' grandson, Carl and Darren. Okay. Now, this, this is Jennifer Allen. Uh, this is Bill Allen's daughter in law. And last week we talked about one of those lightning storms came in, like I say, Wednesday or Thursday afternoon of last week. I mean, they were strong. And she, she's on 23rd Street and got this picture here. Is that not something? Boom. And she took a couple. She's a good photographer. I've seen a picture before. Here's another one. And I thought this was interesting. See, like the, like a little smoke or something coming right there in between? That's, I don't know what caused that. That'd be interesting, but that, that's really cool. And then she had one more. Uh, okay, this was over here. In the lower right-hand corner is a dental office. I'm thinking when that lightning hits, I hope that dentist not uh, pulling the tooth or something because it, it's going to scare everybody. But there's a reflection on the left of mirror. So Jennifer Allen, good, good lighting pictures. Okay, well, okay, that's, that's the picture I want to talk about. The uh, other thing I want to talk about, and if you have any kind of cool pictures like that, uh, go ahead and send them to us and share them with us. Uh, the wasp thing, I want to talk about, I wrote this down, uh, wasp. Uh, last week when we were on our fishing trip uh, over in Caribbean, we, we were in a situation where we had to get on an aluminum ladder and, and go up into the, another boat to get the fire extinguisher. The guy we were with didn't have a fire extinguisher, so we knew. Uh, this is another thing about going over to the float plan, and uh, Wendy Colson good about that. We just stop, time out, look okay, at let's make sure we got this, got this, you know, life jacket and all that. We were standing there, you know, before we even got got onto the boat and all, and, and uh, and he asked the guy, do you got your fire extinguisher? Uh, no, I don't have one. So we had to stop, go to another boat and from a friend of ours and get that fire extinguisher. But, I'm, you know, if you get stopped and don't have one, 
for if you need it, you're going to really, uh, really need it. But uh, if you get a situation where, where you uh, get checked, you're going to get a fine. So anyway, so we got an aluminum ladder, and I went and got an aluminum ladder from, and uh, they climbed up there and got it. So the next day, we moved the aluminum ladder back to where it belonged, and it was uh, up. When he got, he grabbed the ladder this time. And he said, "Ow! Well, he got stung by a wasp." Now here I am. I moved the ladder from point A to point B, and nothing bothered me. Then Wendy got stung by a wasp, and it just reminded. Just, you know, we started talking about wasp stings. You know how they, y'all have all had them. We've all had them, and they're, they're, uh, they're where you least expect them happens when you leave. This is it right here at daybreak. we we're, we're doing this, and I, I started looking at wasp wasp stings and all. Here I've got just a couple of pictures. Uh, Different. <laughs> they're ugly, but uh, there. I just want to just show you a couple of them and basically what to do. This is what scares me when you see this nest right here, and and I, a single bite bad enough. But when you get into a, a bunch of them, they can hurt you. And I know this time of year in late summer they're big, and I know when you're mowing and all, and it, you, you know you get them stirred up. I, that's the only thing my tractor that scares me. I'm not scared of snakes or anything. Of course I'm in a tractor, but uh, yeah, and you see the sting and. And you just want to sort of wash them, really just wash them off and clean them and sort of get a stinger out. And that's the basic first aid for them, but, uh, and also compress them and all. But, and then, of course, if you have an allergic reaction, you can put different things on them. Uh, you can actually have an antihistamines, or, you know, to stop the scratching and all. So anyway, on wasp springs, they're, they're, uh, they're a situation where you just want to take care of it, but be careful. Uh, Late this time of year, on the ladders, and just look around your house. In fact, I find myself looking around the house outside and everything, and, you know, I sort of know where they're going to be, and, you know, they're going to get out of the weather, they're going to get up uh, up in here and, and uh, sort of stay protected. They won't bother you unless you accidentally bother them, but it, it happened this past weekend, it sort of, you know, woke me back up about thinking about wasp things, so, uh, like I said, the only time it really bothered me, and I know you are too, when you're out in the woods and all, and you're moving around, or hit a big old nest, and they get stirred up, but the worst ones of all, are the yellow jackets, you know, when, up in the, when they go down into the ground and, and they come up and they'll just swarm you. So uh, just be careful and try to know uh, where you're going. Uh, my problem is sometimes when I'm bush hogging and all, I don't really know where I'm going because I'm going to have to go around this tree or that tree and all, and you know what I'm talking about. All right, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. All right, let's start off with this one right here. This is, uh, okay, I've got a kick out. I always show these funny things I find. If you wait long enough to cook dinner, everyone would eat cereal. Follow me for more recipes. <laughs> we'll get a kick out of that. Okay, look, there's got a great picture here. Phil Chester out of Panama City Beach, a city councilman out there. His son, Colby. Colby was down for a week. He is a minister in Ohio. A nice drum. Hope all is well, Phil. And that's Phil, that's Colby Chester. He's got a church up there in Ohio, and he said, came down here for a week, and this is what we'd love to see our our kids come back and enjoy our beautiful nature here, and thank you, Phil, for sharing that with us. That's that's some really good, uh, really good stuff there. Also, uh, let's see. I got a email here. I'm, I'll get to it. But I want to go ahead and I want to go ahead and start talking about scallops uh, because first of all, I'm gonna do a little segment here on scallops because you know it opens up today and we we'll meet a lot of people out there. And I, you know, uh, I, I don't know how to say this uh, politically correct, but. Uh, Gulf County and Franklin County, they're they're they're, they're trying to. They're, they're not, if you don't be careful, you're going to turn out like Panama City Beach and South Walton. So just enjoy what we have, and uh, you know, it just well, I think you know what I'm trying to say. But just try to keep it natural and keep it on a low key. But everybody's just trying to. Uh, we see that. Well, per, case in point, go look at that motel down there by Press Nails, and it'll 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 uh, it'll get you excited on the opposite end. All right, check this out right here. We got, okay, I'm right top of the screen is Black's Island, okay? To the right is Presnell, to the left is the Cape. Now there's an area right here, the FWC is set aside, this area is protected, okay? It is protected. They are actually trying to raise scallops in this area. There are the flags up there and everything and you can't help but miss it. And I, I talked to, uh, Officer Webb a couple of years ago, that they've done this for a while now, and every now and then they'll catch somebody in it, <laughs> even, uh, and they they claim they don't know, but they do know. So anyway, keep the area there. So let's talk let's talk about the population. I'm going to show you this graph, and 
And uh, Gulf County is, is a black mark, a right, real dark mark, and uh, anyway, you know, shot up there in the right hand corner, but it's sort of hard. Uh, this is not a good graph. The bar graph is a lot better. I used to do a bar graph. But anyway, so I'm going to go through this area right here. I can do it the year. In 2012, Gulf County average right here, 3.6 scallops per triangle. 3.6, 2012. Franklin and then Wakulla, look at the bottom, 34.9. So let's go through this. This is really interesting. Uh, 2013, Gulf County went up to 7.7, .7, and there's the rest of them there, the Big Bend area, okay? 7.7, .7, then right here, uh, in the next year, Gulf County had 7.2, 2014. Uh, let's see, I'm going to try to, I, I just, this is just important to me to see. We're going up to 2017. Gulf County averaged 2.5. Wasn't a good year. But look at Taylor County and Dixie County at the bottom, 22.2. All these are the average number from doing the survey. And then uh, going up to this next year, 2018, Gulf County had 8.1. Look at Franklin County. They didn't have any. Look at Dixie. That's all down there in Stenhatchee. All right, next one. Go down to 2019. Check this out. In 2019, 66.1. Is that incredible going from like 3 to 4 to 66? And the other counties didn't do all that good. So, okay, and then, and then the last uh, average, all time average, all time average, Gulf County is 12.5, Franklin 11.0. You can see the other counties, Taylor, Stenhatchee, and Dixie, 21, and Citrus. So, uh, they're all about, they all sort of level out pretty good uh, in 12.5. So, that's per triangle. So, this, this year we don't know what to expect. I do want to, I do want to tell you, make sure if you're out there waiting, if you're waiting and doing all the things uh, that, that uh, without a boat, you got to have a floating flag like this right here. You want to have this with you. And you know we've gone over before, you need these on your boats and all. You've got to stick above everything. But if you're out there waiting, you want to have one, especially uh, out there not, with not many people around. Okay, so that's the, the scallop survey. And another thing, too, uh, the... Uh, like I said, I don't know if they're doing a survey this year. Uh, I know they didn't do it in St. Joe Bay. I don't know if they did the other base systems or not, but we'll keep you posted on it. And if you remember when I first started doing the show about 15 years ago, I was adamant about keeping up with this research, and, and it showed and it, the cycle went every four years. Every four years on, on presidential election year, it always go down. And, uh, but at other times, it would sort of build up and then go down. So that was interesting. So with that in mind, I want to go ahead and... Uh, when I put these videos together, and sometimes I'll show them again, this is a how to clean scallop video. And last week I had how to clean uh, blue crabs, and I got people that haven't watched the show before that uh, people get in touch with me, say how much they enjoy the how to video, how to do that. They're just you know fascinated we can do those kind of things. Uh, you know you don't have to go to <laughs> you don't have to go to fish market all the time and, and do that stuff. So anyway, this one how to clean how to clean the uh, the actual scallop itself, and I go over it real good. And I want you to notice that little uh, fish cleaning knife. I'm gonna show it. I'll show it to you on a video, but it was, a, it was handmade by Chester Forehand, and that's been with me a very long time. He made me a couple of them. It's actually a, a water hose with epoxy in it and a butter knife that he sort of curved a little bit and sharpened just a little bit so it curves as you clean out the scallop. So that's a special knife to me from Chester Forehand. So, uh, Jeff, let's go and roll this video. Hi folks, what we want to learn today is how to suck scallops. I know some of y'all know how to do it, but this is for the other folks that don't know quite how to do it. Real simple process. You know, scalloping, as far as our heritage here in the Panhandle, goes way back. I know when I do in my book, I used to talk to some old timers who, who their wives sometimes would shuck during the season and all, and they would actually make enough money during scallop season to, to buy them a car, buy, buy the kids clothes, all kinds of stuff like that. So right now we'll have no more commercial scalloping. Those days are over, and what we have now, Basically, it's a collection, of, a real good collection of scallops each summer in St. Joe Bay. And I've been fortunate and blessed enough, this is going on almost 40 years I've been able to do this, and it's one of the most fun things we've ever done with our family and friends. And shucking, though, a lot of people dread shucking, but really, it's a relaxing and fun thing to do. A couple of basic things to remember. One of the things, you always want to have your shells open. Now, we went scalloping today, we cleaned most of our scallops on the boat, but I decided to bring back a few so we could film this little piece right here. You have, step number one, you have two sides of the scallop. You have a light colored side 
and a dark color side. Now you always want a dark color side up, okay? And then you have like, this is a little special, this is old butter knife, we just curved a little bit and, and epoxy the handle. And you take that curved tip right there, and you take it up and you run along the top of the shell right there. You do it in one sweep, then you pop that dark color shell, toss it, and then you get all the guts. You can get it all at one time, and most of the time they'll come right off in one clean pull. Toss them away, and then again with that curved knife, what you want to do is slice it right here. You don't leave any meat on the shell. That's what the old timer looked at. I want to know if you left any meat on the shell. Once you have that, just dump them off in there and just start it over again. You want let's do it one more time. You want to pick it up. You have two sides: light color shell, dark color shell. Pop it open. It'll pop open easy now. If they set out just a few minutes, it'll always let them open up. Pop off that top one. Now you'll notice one of the things they have. They do have a lot of guts, a lot of eyes, and all. One of the things is that muscle right there sitting on the on the on the side. They don't sit right in the middle. They sit on the side over there. So be aware of that. That's why you come in. Always come in on on your right side. And again. Clean it off really good. And these are some big, big scallops. Uh, and, and you know, scallops, they, uh, they're a lot of the jury's still out on, on, on the research and all, but basically they used to think they lived for about 12 months, but now they're saying they live from 12 to 18. And, and I'm going to give you an example. I, I, I believe they live from 12 to 18 months. And what I want to show you, this is in one trip now. There's two different size scallops. This one has got to be full grown, and this one is almost, uh, I say, half grown right there. And that's it. And that's uh, you can do that early part of the season. You you can get them this size, or in the late part of the season, you can get them this size. So just remember, you have two sides. You have a light colored side and dark colored side, and you want to come in on the top part, which is dark colored size. And hope you now know how to suck the scallops. I'm Winston Chester of Pan Out Outdoors, helping you be a better outdoorsman. Okay, we're uh, we're glad you're with us, and I hope you enjoy that video. Hope you learn uh, learn a little bit from it. And, and here, I want to go and point this out too. A lot of people want to do all kinds of things, put them on ice, and, and put them in a, keep them in the water and all. And after you get them har you know, harvested, we just put them in a bucket and put a damp towel on top of them. And when we get back to the house, we uh, dump them out onto the concrete floor there, and just give them a little bit of time, and they will start opening up. If you keep them in the water and all, if they keep them closed, they're going to just stay clamped up. So uh, there are all kinds, you see all kinds of stuff on YouTube now. And everything you see on YouTube is not necessarily the best way to do it. But I'm speaking from a veteran who learned a lot from people ahead of me. And this is what the old timers did, and I just still do it. So just, just spread them out and give them time, they'll open up. And it's, that's, that's the way to do it. Okay, I got a, I ran across this also. I thought this was an interesting thing too. When I saw, when I saw it, I couldn't help but think about it. They call this uh, super rare, okay, it is super rare 13 foot, 13 foot sawfish caught on Florida Space Coast. And this was uh, last week, August 11th uh, at 540. So anyway, I got a picture of it right here and 13 foot. And you don't intentionally try to catch these. They're not a, a game fish or anything, but, but it, it reminded me, you see it right there? It reminded me of my story in the book. And look, you see the resemblance of that sawfish? If you have my book, go to page 188 and read this story. This is, this is just one of my special stories that I enjoy doing on the sawfish. After World War II ended, these five guys uh, all came home. They were buddies in high school and in school. Uh, and some of them had gone off to college. War started. They all went to war. And they came back and just and a story about them going out here uh, fishing. Charles Baldwin told me the story. It was on June the 8th, 1946. They went out, they'd gone out shark fishing. They were catching 10 and 12 foot sharks. And these five men, uh, Turner Murphy, Jim Lee, Bill Lee, Gail Sutter, and, and Baldwin. And I want to talk about those men. Those five men uh, were strong in the community too later on. And they, were, you know, they did have different jobs. They raised their families and all. And I just thought that was a special time. And, they, and when they were telling me, they got the sawfish up, they went to Tarpon Dock, and they, they winched it up and everything, got that picture out there. And they were saying that uh, the commercial fishermen, some, one of the fishing boats came in, they were saying some things not nice to them, you know, little young, young guys, and they said, get that thing out of here. And so they, they had, you know, because it didn't have any commercial value, so they had to get it, get it out of there. And the, uh, on a side note, uh, when the book came out, uh, Mr. Lee, they were all, all alive and all, they, and they, 
and invited me. Uh, Bill Lee called me up on like a Monday or Tuesday night and wanted me to come over and have a Saturday morning breakfast uh, right there off Beach Drive with all five of those guys. And I was so looking forward to it. And I said, man, I can't wait to see those guys. I, I, I've seen a couple of them. I want all five of them together. And I got a call like Wednesday night. He said, Coach, he said, I don't, uh, so and so, one of, the, one of the fellas was sick and he wasn't going to be able to make it and we'll get together later. And as you can imagine, we just never got a chance to get together before they started up. The health started failing on all of them and they're, they're all passed away now. But uh, Mr. Baldwin and Mr. Lee, uh, what exciting times. So when I saw the sawfish story, I had a flashback and it, they weren't that rare, but that was in St. Andrew Bay. And of course, uh, you don't you don't get many of them there, but it was just a special time. Uh, I've got a, let's see if we've got time to squeeze this in. I got a, I also got a, uh, a note from one of my, I'm sorry, I don't think I'll get it in. Okay, uh, well, I, I'll do this, I'll do this uh, later on when I get back. But uh, anyway, we've got to wrap things up. Now, this week, tomorrow, we're going to have the video on the trip I took last week with, with our buddies that we took on the Carabelle Tournament, and we uh, we had a great time. So some good video on that, some good action video. We've got a sort of special situation. I'll explain it to you tomorrow, but it's not a, it's just a special situation that happened. So we'll take care of that. We've got some, a couple of guests coming in to do it. I'm going to be back and forth and checking on everything and all, and so uh, if you... If you need me, though, I may be out of pocket. I'm going to try to be on the water as much as possible. Right. Hunker down, get this weather out of here, and as the day progresses, it's going to get better. And if you win, I've got a couple of calls in the memory. If you win something on Friday, uh, let me know, and I can mail, it, I'll mail those certificates to you. If not, just go straight down to Tarpon Dock, talk to Clay or to Kenny down there. We're going to wrap things up. Remember, we've got really good, strong tides this week, so especially going into the weekend. And, and I try to want to get back. I'm going to come back on the show one day this week and give you a good first-hand a report on the scallops. You have a great day. Do something good for someone else, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Van Handle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.